Welcome to Eye Contact. I'm Nino Hirnschall. Calculating the correct eye power for an eye that has previously undergone refractive surgery is very challenging. Today I have the pleasure to discuss with Professor Graham Barrett these uh, challenges. Thank you very much for coming today. Thank you, Nina. So what is it that makes eye power calculations so challenging in these cases that have undergone refractive surgery? Um, they are challenging and there's really uh, fundamental reasons why that's the case and the problem is most of our corneal power calculations assume a certain relationship between the posterior cornea mm -hmm. and the anterior surface between the radio of posterior and anterior and when you do lazy PLK you change that relationship because you flatten the front surface you leave the posterior cornea unchanged. Now furthermore Sometimes the surface becomes quite aspheric, mm -hmm. particularly with radial keratotomy. And you've got another problem is that why, where are you actually measuring the power? Uh, and the last thing is a lot of RL calculation formulae um, utilize a prediction for the anterior chamber depth. And you've changed now the central and the peripheral curvature of the mm -hmm. cornea. They no longer match. So all three things are relevant. But the most important is the disturbed ratio between the posterior and the anterior radius of curvature. So would you uh, prefer to go for an estimation of the posterior surface of in these cases, or would you rather measure it and take that into account for your calculation? Well, t traditionally, that disturbed ratio has mm -hmm. to be taken into account uh, in the post-refractive formulae. Yeah. And over the years, we've learned to do that very well. And uh, now that we are able to measure that posterior cornea, we are learning for the first time the value of being able to utilize a post-refractive formula mm -hmm. incorporating measured posterior cornea. Mm -hmm. And do you have any kind of device that you would prefer for these kind of measurements? Or you have also three different approaches that you have, three different measurement methods that you combine for one? Yes. Well, the three different measurements is really trying to determine what's the best anterior surface mm -hmm. and uh, so any device that does good anterior measurements can be used in that um, vector mean or vector median calculation. Uh, for, the post, for the posterior cornea we've really got two technologies. We've mm -hmm. got Scheinflug imaging and we've got uh, more recently swept source OCT. And uh, both, I think, have good utility. Both are effective. Um, I suspect that the swept source OCT is probably going to be more accurate just because the so speed too. of acquisition yeah. uh, is, is faster. I think so too, yeah. Okay. And in those cases, in those patients especially, where you have any kind of, of radio keratometry, for example, do you have any kind of approach for these patients? Because I think they're even more tricky than maybe than LASIK and LASIK patients. They are more tricky, but it's not a uniform category. Mm -hmm. So a four or eight incision RK is yeah. quite a different creature than maybe a 32 yeah, incision. Sure. Fortunately, the latter we don't see that uh, often. Mm -hmm. But actually, I find that RK calculations, uh, the strategy you use is somewhat different, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you use, say, the true K uh, calculator, it does RK as well as LASIK, but it's taking you down a somewhat different pathway. But I still find that I can get um, good results with post-RK prediction. Mm -hmm. May I ask you, what kind of measurements do you do in your clinic for these patients? Who sure. Yeah. Well, I, I treat them pretty much like every patient who undergoes cataract surgery. All my patients get three devices, mm -hmm. uh, Armaster 700, Lenstar, and mm -hmm. Pentacam. Yeah. And that, of course, applies for uh, those that have had refractive surgery. Yeah. But then I'll utilize the information somewhat differently uh, in the post-refractive context. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you have any kind of advice for us for patients who have irregular astigmatism? May it be due to refractive laser or any kind of irregular astigmatism otherwise? I mean, especially for toric lenses now, sure. in these cases? I mean, the first thing that must cross your mind is do you think you can improve that irregularity with some intervention? Mm -hmm. Uh, but to be honest, although I will use lubricants and bring them back and uh, lid hygiene, etc., mm -hmm. uh, in many cases you do that and you bring them back in a month, and guess what? It's still somewhat irregular. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but that's where I find the um, 
integrated K method of combining uh, measurements mm -hmm. so much uh, utility because of course it's somewhat irregular but with the three different devices three different measurements mm -hmm. often you can compensate to mm -hmm. some extent for that irregularity. And if I understand correctly you use the median if you have three different measurements is yes. it correct? Mm -hmm. And what do you do? I mean, of course, with the median, it's easier because if you have one severe outlier, you yes. still have no problem. But then, uh, if I also understand correctly, if you have only two measurements, you go for the mean. And do you also right. do you also take into account if there is a large deviation between the measurements? Because then the mean could still be wrong because one of the measurements could be wrong. Yes. Anything to counteract to that, maybe? That's why I do three. And that's why you do three. It's a good answer. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a pleasure, Nina. Thank you. And for more information, please visit us at eurotimes.org. Thank you.